Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Saturn transit video. Saturn is going to transit into Aquarius. This is big news. You're definitely going to want to see your mini report for this one. Definitely watch from your moon sign. Definitely watch from your ascendant sign. Saturn is going to make a transition into Aquarius. This is huge. This is really big. If you've had a reading with me over the past two or three years, I'm sure I would have talked about this transit, this time. I'm sure I would have talked about that in your reading. It's really important. In the readings that I do one-on-one, -on -one, the consultations that I do, I always look at Saturn's movement against the moon and Saturn's movement against the ascendant. It's so, so important because Saturn sets up the training ground for you for the two or three years wherever he is. So he's going to be in Aquarius and the training ground for us all is going to shift. The work that we're going to do the, in terms of you know, spiritual growth, spiritual development, our path, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's about to change. And I'm excited for this change. I think we all need this change because Saturn in Capricorn was tough. Saturn in Capricorn was really, really, really difficult. It began around Jan, Feb 2020, and of course the whole world changed. And why did the whole world change at that particular time? Well, I believe, yes, it's because Saturn moved into Capricorn, but it's very much as well that in our system, in the sidereal Vedic system, we had Pluto move into Capricorn at that time as well. So we had colossal change around the world. It was really, really huge. And I think Saturn in Aquarius is going to be better. I think we're gonna have some better energies coming up. I'm gonna talk about what those are. So we're gonna take a look collectively. I'll do that very briefly. I don't wanna to speak too much about the collective, but I've got some general thoughts that I want to talk through. And then we'll take a look individually as well. So for this episode, definitely look from your moon, Saturn against the moon, so important. And those of you who, some of you are leaving Sardisati period, now I believe that's Sagittarius and Pisces, you are going to enter. So I will be covering that across the board. Why don't we begin? Why don't we take a look at how this movement is gonna play out uh, in, in the collective? So what are, we, what are we dealing with here? We've got Saturn in Aquarius. So we're moving from Earth, right? Saturn in Capricorn was all about Earth. We're moving into air, okay? Saturn in Aquarius, Aquarius is air. So things perhaps can speed up a little bit. If you've been feeling that the last two or three years have been slow, uh, look out for this. Things could speed up a little bit. It's a possibility, right? This is fixed air and things could move a little bit faster. Now Aquarius is it represents many things, okay? It's, it's the humanitarian sign, it's the rebel, it's the rule breaker, it's the innovator. Psychology is at its height here, I do believe, because this is, you know, air is, when we've got air houses, it's very much about, uh, yes, it's desire, it's the mind as well, okay? So psychology is at its absolute height here. And I was looking this up today, I'm pretty sure um, Carl Jung does have Saturn in Aquarius. Uh, let me see if I can bring that up right now. See, I should always prepare this ahead of time. I never do. But those of you who like my waffle at the beginning, I'm sure you won't mind. Let's have a look here. Carl Jung. Yeah, he's got Saturn in Aquarius. Look at that. I, I, I always think that Aquarians make really good psychologists. It's kind of um, the top of the air houses. And this is just before we head into Pisces. And when we head into Pisces, that's when all becomes one, right? And the boundaries are down, you know, and, and we blend and we enmesh and all the wonderful stuff, right? So, but here, you know, it's, it's psychology, it's boundaries, you know, all that kind of thing does count here as well. This is also the sign of big money, big wealth, big gains. They call it the sign of, you know, hopes, dreams and wishes. And I think Aquarians are pretty hopeful people. They're optimistic people. 
they can live on hope you know is that a good thing you see and hope dreams and wishes i mean that does sound a bit like fantasy doesn't it and sometimes i tend to think why is it that we've got these hopes dreams and wishes and it can be that things are tough you know that's why we're having all these desires um, and all that kind of thing emerging because maybe things are tough and challenging in Aquarius and that is certainly the case right a lot of wishes for big wealth are coming because there's big lack in the world I've got the note here this is the sign of you know you will do something with nothing you can make something with nothing or you can make um, you don't you don't need like it's like a, a poor craftsman will blame his tools right and I've got this phrase here need is the mother of all invention okay so I've been thinking about these things as I've been preparing these notes uh, I also have here that this is the sign of group consciousness as well we have groups here so an Aquarian will care about what other people think they'll really want to fit in they'll really want their peers to think well of them this is also the sign of awards you know where your peers award you and, and things like that so awards can be here as well but let's take a look at how this is going to play out in the collective I've got a few thoughts on this general stuff nothing fancy um, I've talked a little bit about this one before that is the fact that we've got a global recession coming up which has been talked about in the media we've got Saturn entering that 511 line which I do believe is the line of the stock market big wealth big money speculative gains all that kind of thing we've got Saturn entering that line when I have looked this up in the past I have seen that there is a bit of a theme with recessions and depressions and things like that this line will be affected but what I will do is hopefully in the coming weeks I'll get some time to sit down and actually look at all of that again and possibly make a video about that I'm going to jot that down uh, yeah that is important if I can look that up when have we had financial disasters and all that kind of thing and can we see this line is active but I'm pretty sure in 2008 uh, this line was active in a big way I've got the note here Saturn is restriction his coldness he's the taskmaster he's weeding out the problems in our financial institutions he has been doing that across the last two or three years all the big institutions all the places of power the elites the top people he has been going through that and as he's been doing that work I think a lot of people have become aware of what's really going on or alternative ideas of how society is put together and all that kind of thing so there's a lot of increase of awareness uh, as to how things really run so that's that's a good thing more awareness is, is always a good thing uh, the other thing I've got here is how will Saturn in Aquarius play out in the collective I've got here class action lawsuits we're going to see a lot more people coming together to sue you know giant corporations right so some of the money that was made over the last two or three years and there was a lot of money that was made and, and the, the pandemic I know this is controversial but well I, I do believe that it did mint some billionaires and things like that uh, there are lots of people talking about that now and you know they made their money okay but over the next two or three years I think we're going to see people come together and and sue some of these giant corporations we might see some of that big money that was made we might see some of that come back to the people now again is that hopes dreams and wishes is that some fantasy thinking it might be I'm not sure uh, but yeah that is something I've been thinking about I know here in Australia now I don't know too much about this but we have a large provider of phone services um, I think they were hacked that kind of thing and I do believe that there is some kind of uh, class action lawsuit against them again I don't know too much about that if I find some news while I'm editing and googling I'll, I'll try and find some news I should have done that obviously before starting this video but I didn't have time but I know someone who talked about it and I'll check it out so yeah apparently class action lawsuits could be a thing I've got the note here reunions 
okay we're gonna have a lot of friends friends coming together again we're gonna have families come together again we're gonna have a lot of people come together again so I think this is one of the really good things that's gonna happen in the collective you're gonna see a lot more people traveling uh, a lot more people coming together the, over the last two or three years and I know this through my work through my consultations that I've been doing with you guys some of you have had to move out some of you have you know you've had to move out you've had family members who've had other ideas as to how to live over the last two or three years and you've had to you know do things differently uh, but I do see a lot of all of that shifting and healing and mending and you know we've, we're gonna have healing happen here we've got Satta Bishak uh, at some point Saturn's gonna go in there I'm sure and uh, yeah it's, there's gonna be a lot of healing that happens over the next two or three years as well I haven't looked into the nakshatras as yet, but I will do. I have to check that out. But, but Saturn's definitely going to um, be going into some nice places nakshatra-wise. So we, we should definitely check that out. As, as I go, I'm, I'm going to do all of that. Now, let's see here. We've got Leo is going to be stimulated on the other side because whenever I read one of these movements, I read the entire line. So yes, Saturn's moving into Aquarius, but I'll also look at Leo as well. So we're going to see people being very creative more art um, you know parties gatherings and I do think there will be some form of restrictions still but like I, I don't think it's going to be what it was at all I think I think there's going to be a huge amount of healing uh, in everyone's lives to come through you know now that we've had a very tough transit there's going to be renewed energy and healing and mending and, and good stuff on the way. Now, how will this play out individually? How will this Saturn in Aquarius play out for each and every one of us? Well, I think earlier I mentioned that phrase, didn't I? Uh, need is the mother of all invention. And I often think that that is a very Saturnian phrase, but which type of Saturn, Capricorn or Aquarius? Well, we could see it as both actually. Uh, in Capricorn, need is the mother of invention. So that can be the kind of thing where you're running a big corporation and you're only given so much budget, and, but you have to work that budget really hard, right? So we can see it in Capricorn. And we can see it here in Aquarius as well. Here in Aquarius, this could be, now an example of this could be, let's say you're wanting to start a YouTube channel. And a lot of you might be wanting to start and I recommend everyone start. This is such a wonderful thing to do. It's so much fun. So let's say you want to start a YouTube channel. Well, the next two to three years, so that's Jan 18, 2023 to March 2025, this is an ideal time to start your YouTube channel or your Instagram or whatever social media thing you want to do. This is an ideal time to begin. But the other thing is, what kind of equipment and very often when we start these things we think oh I'd love to buy this or that I know I did well I, I got a what have I got Canon G7X Mark II so I did get a camera for this work but you can just use your iPhone and if, in fact iPhones are doing amazing things right now and this is that kind of thing where I've got the note here, yeah, you will need to be more resourceful and in that process you will discover your own gifts and talents. This time is about your gifts, your talents, your skills, your strength, like what's inside. That's what counts more. It's not the kit or the equipment, right? So I know people who've got like rooms full of camera equipment, but yet you get them to make a film and their film is it's a bit boring or it's not very stylish or it's not interesting or you know what counts is the idea okay this is Aquarius this is the innovator this is the one who thinks up brilliant ideas right this is about talent and skill it's not about the equipment so you know those filmmakers who say oh well I can't make the film because I you know I don't have the budget or I, I want to do special effects it's like if, you, if, if it's about special effects, that means the script isn't very good. Or it means the idea is you don't have an idea. Because a really great idea, it doesn't matter if there's a bit of poor execution. So this is 
Saturn in Aquarius, this is the time where, you know, there might be a bit of poor execution. We may, we may not have the money to, to make the fancy stuff. We might not have the gear. We might not have the tools. But this is the time of having great ideas and having skill and you know, being entertaining, right? So with whatever it is that you're gonna make, and we've got a lot of creators who come and watch these videos. A lot of you are creating something on the side, you're musicians or you're painters or you're you know, doing amazing things with food. And I know because I consult you guys and you're amazing with what you do. We've got such an incredible community of very creative people. So this is gonna be your transit for really upping the skill level really digging deep and drawing out the talent, drawing out your uniqueness. So let's say you're gonna start some kind of channel for something or other. Well, devise some kind of content where only you do that. And there's no one else who does that or there's no one else who does it the way you do it. That's another Aquarian thing as well. So this is gonna be a time, so yeah, I've got the note here. Yeah, how will it play out individually? This is the time where you get to be your individual self. You get to be your unique self. And this is about your gifts really coming up and you sharing who and what you are with the world. Because it's also about sharing, it's about social media, it's about interacting, it's about networking, it's about communicating. Okay, Aquarius is a great communicator as well. Um, I've got the note here, every choice will count. Spend time with your creativity. Consider what you are doing from all angles. And I have the note here, style is an excellence in curation or, or the choice. It's like the choices that you make. Why do you choose to cut the film there? Why do you choose to run the music longer? Why do you choose this? Why do you choose that? So that's what's gonna count at this time. And I was thinking as well about um, Karl Lagerfeld. I'm pretty sure, and I'm going off memory here, I haven't looked at his chart for a while, but he does run Rahu Ketu Axis. Uh, Rahu is Aquarius, I do think. I hope I got that right. Ketu is Leo. And yeah, he, he ran this energy really beautifully. And he talked about how the, the simple farm girl is more chic than the city lady who buys his products, right? So he, he knows this thing of need is the mother of invention. You know, where are the great ideas born? Where does style come from? A lot of greatness can be born out of this place of Aquarius. It's really cool. Uh, I've got the note here, don't be put off by talk of recession. Definitely don't be put off by that. Don't, and I've got the note here, don't let me saying we need to be resourceful to stop you either. So this is a really important point because over the last two or three years, some of you have profited enormously. You've done really well. A lot of you have you've gotten promotions, you've gotten married. Uh, some of my clients have, yeah, there was um, one I got to you know, work out the date of the wedding and things like that. But there have been a few of you who've come back after a time and, and you've told me that you know, you're getting married and things like that. So some of you over the last two or three years, when the whole world was running a really tough transit, and I, me personally, I ran a tough transit. Uh, boy, did I have a tough one. You know, the first few months of it, um, I was just kind of in bed exhausted and extremely sick and I finally it's taken me the whole transit to heal and recover and I'm now going to be heading back you know to my place in England so I'm amazed it's taken me an entire transit I got enormously sick and my Saturn was passing through a water house so you, you, when you've got Saturn passing through a water house it is tough uh, my one knocked me out and um, yeah, but then I kind of look back and I can see that, you know, it was a bit of a big ship turning because I was completely changing career and what I do and, and all this kind of thing. But definitely for the first few months of 2020, I was totally wiped out. I was, I was really, really sick. And um, I've just been progressively slowly getting better. And now I'm more than better. Now I, I don't get headaches like I used to and I don't take any paracetamol and I don't, you know, my whole health has improved massively. So I've worked this transit and while it might have looked bad to the outside world, the outside world might have looked at my life and gone, oh, that, that's a bad time, you know, but my inner riches have gone up 
uh, enormously and and yeah I I'm super grateful for this transit I have learned so much so even though it doesn't look so great through the eyes of the world you know and some of you would have run a transit like that over the last two or three years you would have run a tough transit where and a lot of you did so as I'm saying some of you profited some of you got married some of you had a great time some of you and I've consulted you guys yeah it was really challenging you know you had to move back with the family and then you move there and then oh gosh pandemic and rules and then you had to move out of there and you had to do this and you had to oh some people have gone through really tough stuff I know so but the reason I bring up all of that is to say that don't let anyone else's ideas of what this transit is going to be take it on board but if it's not the best news or something like that just don't worry about it you know just um, take on board what's positive and empowering and leave the rest behind because you can always work in the now moment and you can always create the life of your dreams right you can always work in the now moment because here in astrology we were looking at past we're looking at future you know uh, we're working with concepts time is a conceptual framework it's just concepts but in the now that's where your life really happens that's where life unfolds you know, and we all know what it is to have a concept of our future. That's our goal or our plan or our dream, right? We're here with Aquarius, hopes, dreams and wishes. But how often does it play out exactly like that? The now is usually a little something different. So try and work in the now as much as possible and disregard anything that is not empowering or that's, you know. But sometimes it's helpful to hear things like, you know we've got I've got the note here yeah, talk of recession it's good to hear that because then if we are going through something like that you don't have to blame yourself you know it's um it's you know that you're in a situation where life is just like that for a time right but yeah it's amazing you know it, when they speak of like a recession or depression or this or that, there are so many people who've massively succeeded during those times and earned huge amounts of money. So I just want to say that, you know, this transit could be good for you, right? So don't take anything too seriously here. Know that it, you, you might have an excellent transit. And the way to judge that is if you look at your Sarvashtaka Varga uh, points, and I'll bring an example up. I'll, I'll show you one on the screen so that you can see what that looks like. But if you see a high point score and you've got, say, for example, Saturn passing through 3, 6 or 11, then you're going to have an excellent uh, transit. You will profit, even though there might be a global recession going on. All right, I'll give you an example of... Um, now I don't have his time, unfortunately, but just through the just through watching his life Ali Abdal I've been able to see just just through watching I've been a subscriber to him when he had tens of thousands of subscribers I've been with him for ages I remember watching his videos when at the bottom in the description he, he wrote something like um, if you're in Cambridge and you want to have a coffee let me know and I'll come and have a coffee with you that's how long I've been a subscriber with him for and I saw since Jan Feb 2020 of last year he just went up 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 like it just this transit took him to however many millions of subscribers he's got now so this is the transit that and I don't have his time so I can't look it up but I'm sure he's gone through some kind of the Sarvashtaka Varga points would be high and he probably went through some kind of Saturn third from sixth from eleventh from I'm sure of it and sometimes when I have these hunches and then when I do get the time and I check it out very often it ends up being the thing so but we can see from his life it doesn't matter because just the life has shown it that he's run a beautiful Saturn transit since Jan Feb 2020 that's when all the success happened so don't worry if somebody says oh there's global recession don't let that be you just know that well I'm going to create my life in the now and I'm going to use teachers like Neville Goddard Joseph Murphy who else Stuart Wilde look up these guys and 
they will teach you how in the now moment you can go beyond you can create what it is that you want all right let's take a look now who's finishing sati sati period so some of you are coming out of sati sati some of you are going in what is sati sati period well sati sati period is a time it's a 7.5 year about 7.5 years it can be about eight years it depends on how saturn's moving his retrogrades and all that kind of thing but um, you know, a seven to eight year period where Saturn is passing over your moon. And this is a difficult time. Saturn is kind of going through like all the files of your mind kind of thing. And he's, he's I, I, I say it's like weeding. He's kind of ripping out the weeds and some of that process does hurt sometimes. And I remember my Sati Sati, my first one was I think uh, yeah, in my early 20s. And um, yeah, that was hard. I went through some tough stuff there. So, you know, but the whole thing isn't hard, okay? Uh, the whole thing might feel a little bit like Groundhog Day. It might feel like I work and work and work and yet I seemingly go nowhere. But don't worry, Saturn records everything. He sees how hard you work and he will catch you up. In a future transit, that's when you'll get that skyrocket thing. He'll just, he'll help you. He will, when he can give you and he sees that you've done good, he will give to you. I've seen this happen so many times. So keep working, keep being you, keep, keep doing all the right stuff. I've got the note here, some of you are coming out of Sadi Sati, some of you are going in. So who's going in to Sadi Sati, Pisces moon? You're going in, right? You're going in. This is the big time. Uh, and you're a Pisces moon. You're going to be fine. You're very spiritual and, you know, you're doing all the right things anyway. Especially if you're watching a channel like this, you'll be fine. The people who have to worry about Sati Sati are people who are not doing the right thing. I'll speak about them in, the mo in a moment. But who's coming out? Um, so that Sagittarius moon, you guys are coming out of Sati Sati period. So you, you've got a 2.5 year time or thereabouts from Jan 18 uh, to about March 30, 2025, that period of time. So it's quite a while. Saturn is going to reward you. He's going to give you good stuff. And, you know, it's your time to celebrate now. You're coming out of Saturday, Saturday period. Uh, but Pisces means you are going in. And if you're watching a channel like this, you don't have to worry. I think your Saturday, Saturday period will just feel like Groundhog Day at times. Um, you might feel a bit restricted at times. That's about as much as will happen. You might have a, a, a few weeks here and there that are just a little bit difficult, okay? But it's never the full 7.5 year period that's difficult. It doesn't work like that. It's just sometimes there are certain bits of it that are just going to be a bit more challenging than normal. And people who do have to worry are people like, let me give you the example of Bill Gates. I'll just check the time, we're okay. Uh, Bill Gates, yeah, Bill Gates is entering his Sati Sati period and on this channel before I have made a prediction that he will be in court across his Sati Sati period and I just happened to find uh, this article, I'll, I'll put it beside me, uh, it, it turns out that I, I do believe there is a court case that has been lodged against him in India. I think this is one of a few, I, I don't think there's just one like this, I think there are several. And by the way, don't worry if you did take uh, the jab or whatever. It's, it's, this is not about that. I'm not going into any of that. But, uh, and don't worry if you did take it because I know so many people who took it and they're fine, you know, and it's okay. But this is interesting because I think um, Bill Gates, well, he should be in court across this period. The last time he had Sadi Sadi period, he was in court the court activities dragged on for a long time. I don't know if he was in court for that whole period. I don't think it was, but I know the court um, cases and, and that kind of thing, the activity of him being connected with court was across his Sati Sati period in the last one that he had. So, you know, uh, I, I think, yeah, we, we might see more headlines like this with him. And someone like Bill Gates is clearly not watching a spiritual channel, a channel like this, okay? So it's, it's people who, and people like Fred Goodwin, I'll put up a picture of him as well. Fred Goodwin, famous city banker, right? He made RBS a huge sum of money. 
a British banker who made a huge sum of money before his Saudi Saudi period began. So it, it seemed like Saturn was rewarding him, giving him a lot of green lights. He made a huge amount of money. Saturn 11th from the moon, I'm pretty sure. And then when Saudi Saudi began, because he made that money in, you know, uh, dodgy ways, I'll phrase it like that, because he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't honest, right? He did, he did the wrong things, shortcuts, all that. Saturn absolutely took him to task across the 7.5 year period. And he steadily lost the money, the jobs, the knighthood, everything was stripped from him. It's really interesting. I did look him up this morning as I was preparing these notes and it seems like he is doing just fine. I was pretty shocked to read that yeah, he's got a very huge, uh, I believe it's something like 450,000 pounds pension per year, something like that. I'm like, what? I thought Saturn stripped everything, but nope. So yeah, the, the, the explanation, the astrological explanation for that is Kali Yug. We're in Kali Yug where, you know, people like this uh, are taken care of. So yeah, these are these, this is a strange earth plane at the moment. And well, I do think justice is going to start up again. Saturn moving into Aquarius. This is, we're gonna see justice start to return to the planet. Cause I do think definitely the last two, three years, we have not had much justice here at all, but you know, things are gonna change and we just have to wait and see, right? Let's take a look at each sign and see what we've got going on. So, all right, Aries, let's begin with Aries. I'll have a look at the time, we're okay. Aries, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this is Aries, ascendant, Aries moon, Aries sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we are looking at Saturn's movement into Aquarius from 18th January, 2023 to March 30th, 2025. What's this gonna be for you? Oh, Aries, this is stunning. You have got a beautiful time coming up, okay? Now, you've gotta make the most of this. So you've got, it is just about 2.5 years, a little less. This is great. You have got time to work with Saturn. He is going to give you opportunities across the next 2.5 years. I'll just say 2.5. <laughs> it's easier. Uh, Saturn in the 11th, guys, this is amazing. So Saturn is going to gift you before he enters Sarisati. You will enter Sarisati period about 30 March 2025 onwards, okay? That's when you're going to have your 7.5 year period where maybe you're being a little bit tested here and there, a little, few more challenges and a lot of Groundhog Day, okay? That's how I describe Sarisati period. So that's gonna begin for you March 2025 onwards. Before that though, Saturn wants to gift you. He wants to gift you opportunities. He wants to gift you money. He wants to gift you, you know, I've seen people earn a lot of money, they buy property, they move, um, they get married. I've seen a lot of people get married at this time, sometimes have a baby at this time. Saturn really wants to set you up nicely, okay? He wants you comfortable because then he wants to do his work and he wants to do his work with you, right? So he wants you in a nice place. Uh, and that's, that's okay, you'll, you'll be ready for that. You're watching a video like this, so you are kind of miles ahead of so many people who they're not even touching the spiritual path, they don't even know about this thing, right? So you're gonna be fine. Now Saturn's third aspect across this period, starting Jan 18, is gonna be on your first house. So your physical body and health um, will be getting a little bit of Saturnian treatment at this time. I do think you're gonna have energy. I think you're gonna have energy to capitalize on all the opportunities that Saturn's gonna be bringing your way. But equally, if at times you feel a bit run down, you feel a bit tired, you know that Saturn's casting his aspect on your physical body. He will be casting that aspect. Ideally, he wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be exercising, eating well, doing the right things. Okay, so do the right things and you'll be fine. Now there's a seventh aspect from Saturn onto your fifth house. So your relationships with your children, they, 
those relationships should be really good, okay? Remember Saturn is really happy here in the 11th. So your relationships with your children should be really good or your creativity, okay? Your creativity might be a lot more in focus and this is the creativity that might be helping you get these opportunities. You might feel more creative, you might feel more inspired, you might write a song or something and publish it and it, it, it earns you money at this time. It's that kind of thing. This is the time where you might be inspired, you might get ideas, you should have the energy to act. Uh, things should flow. This should be a good period for you, Aries. I'm very excited. And we've got 10th aspect on your 8th house. So shared assets will be restructured. Uh, assets could be grown jointly at this time. So as I mentioned, this can be a time where you meet someone, you get married, you know, and all of a sudden you've got shared assets and your assets are growing at this time. Um, I do have the note here, yeah, a lot of people get married when Saturn is in this exact transit, okay? So if you've been in a long-term relationship or, you know, you, and the other thing is you might meet someone and marry in this same transit. That's possible too. So Aries, I'm excited for you. Make the most of this incredible transit. You are one of the lucky three signs that is getting the green lights and gifts and support from Saturn. And he is an absolute taskmaster, but when he gives, he gives forever, okay? He gives you something special. So be on the lookout for what he's gonna give to you that you're gonna keep forever. All right, now we are going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So now this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, or Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We have got Saturn moving into Aquarius. He's gonna move through Aquarius from 18 January, 2023 to 30 March, 2025. This is huge. So Saturn is gonna be in your 10th house. Now this is Kendra energy, this is cardinal energy, this is initiatory energy, okay? You've got the power to initiate things. And you've got the power to initiate things regarding your career. I do think this is gonna be a good transit for you. I think it's gonna be a busy transit. I think you're gonna be working a lot. It could be stressful at times. I have to note here, you've got the power and energy to get things going in your career or to get things started in your career. Career, public image, your values, who you are as a person, these things are gonna be in the spotlight. Now, Saturn's casting his third aspect on your 12th house. So at times your expenses might run higher than usual. The other thing is that with this particular aspect, you might feel tired, you might feel run down or drained. So definitely rest, okay? You might also find that sleep is not the best at times, but uh, that's okay. If, if you're run down and tired, well, because you've been working hard and you would be working hard, you've got Saturn in your 10th house, you'll be working hard, so I actually think your sleep should be okay. It's just maybe at the times when the sun is also passing through there, it could be a bit hectic, that's all. But that doesn't happen too often. So I think you should be fine. But definitely rest if you're tired. You might need to look after your physical body, your health, all that kind of thing. Uh, seventh aspect is on your fourth house. So family is gonna be in focus here. Your mother's health could be strained or your relationship with your mother could be strained at this time. Or perhaps you're so busy at work, you don't have time to devote to relationship with mother. This can play out in that way. Um, but there's something about relationship with mother is in focus. If mother is no longer on the earth plane, this could be to do with how you nurture yourself. Or if you have children, how you nurture your children. Perhaps, you know, there's just, there's something about there being not enough time at times across this transit. Where you live could be restructured. Maybe there's a renovation in your property, a big renovation, something you've been wanting to do for a long time. Maybe you're doing that at this time. Um, you might even move at this time as well. Now Saturn is casting 10th aspect on your seventh house. So aspects of your love life, your marriage, or your public image could be tested at this time. Okay, Saturn is pressing on the weak links. And what I would say here, 
is that if you can just look after what's on your side of the tennis net, don't worry about other people, okay? Because there, I think there will be tests and let other people do what they do, but you look after what's on your side of the tennis net. If you're good with you and your actions, you're gonna be fine. So Taurus, I'm liking the look of all of this for you. It's, you're not getting one of the, you're not one of the lucky three that's getting the superb transit, but this is a good one. Of all the different, you know, places where Saturn can be, he does really well in the 10th. So this is a good one. It's that slow and steady patience. We're building, we're accumulating, we're going up. It's that kind of thing that you can look forward to here. It's going to be a slow build, slow burn, but it's, it's a good transit. It's a good solid transit for you, Taurus. All right. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much. Now this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. Now across 18th January 2023 through to 30 March 2025. This is huge. We've got Saturn transiting through Aquarius. <clears throat> now Saturn is going to be transiting through your ninth house. So long distance travel, far away places, you know, will be open to you. Perhaps you will be traveling across this time. It's a great time to study any students or if you're embarking on, you know, an MBA or a PhD or any of that higher study. Um, it's a great time for students of any age, but you know, of course we've got uh, all kinds of all kinds of people coming here. We got a lot of PhD type people here as well. So uh, if you're doing any of that, this is, you know, this is a really good time for that or executive study, adding skills to your bow. This could be a time when you are gifted with a guru or you find a guru, you find, you know, someone that you can really learn from. You're becoming skilled so that come March 2025, you are ready to shine on the world stage, okay? Because March 2025, Saturn will move into your 10th and you're gonna be on the world stage in some shape or form, okay? Um, but you're gonna, you're gonna be seen. Now there's a third aspect from Saturn here on your 11th house. So through effort, the reason I'm saying effort is because there's a seventh aspect to your third house, but through effort, you putting in your effort, you can make a lot of money at this time, okay? So you put in the effort, you put in the work, you can make a lot of money. This could also be if you're starting a social media platform or any of that, you can get a lot of followers across this large period of time. So this is a brilliant time to start a social media platform. Now, seventh aspect on third house, this is good for, as I said, increasing yeah, popularity, fame, increasing your platform. Uh, you will have the energy, I do think, to put hands on effort into building the next steps of your career, your life purpose, what it is you do, where you exercise authority, okay? What it is that you're knowledgeable about or that you're good at. You can improve in that field leaps and bounds. Now the 10th aspect on your sixth house, so you will find the marketplace to be very competitive. If you're looking for work, looking for a job, any of that, you know, it, it could be tricky, okay? So this transit does have its challenges and this could be one of them. You might find that the, the, it, it's thick with competition. There's a lot of competition, it's difficult to get ahead. I've got the note here, if looking for work, keep at it. Competition will get you to improve your offerings and definitely competition will get you to be more unique in the marketplace. This is Aquarius, okay? So this is about how do you be more your individual self? How do you stand out? How do you do your thing in such a way that you're not like anyone else? Okay, that's Aquarius, so definitely do that. Gemini, it's looking like a good transit here though. You're coming out of, you you were, you know, Saturn was eighth from, right? And eighth from that's water and that's tough. I, I'm just coming out of a water transit as well. It's hard. And um, you're coming into some fire now. So things should move faster. Things should uh, improve for you, definitely Gemini. All right, 
we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer welcome. So this is Cancer, Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun, as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. And we are going to take a look at Aquarius, Saturn's movement through Aquarius. This is across 18 January 2023 to 30 March 2025. Okay, so Saturn is in your eighth house. Right, I've been through this transit. It's a tough one. I know it's not easy. I'm going to just say it straight away. It is a tough transit, but it'll look it'll look tough. Okay, from an outside perspective looking in. This is something I just figured out today. When an outsider looks at your life, they might go, oh, what are you doing? Or that, that looks a bit difficult or, you know, whatever. They might judge it. But during this transit, your inner riches are going to go very high. Okay, so you are going to emerge from this transit very able to, uh, well, embrace your inner authority. That's what you're going to do next. So 30 March 2025 onwards, Saturn will be ninth from, okay, where you step up in your authority and you become the authority and you're going to lead and you're going to do amazing things. So don't worry, you've got very good transits coming, especially for you after this particular spot. Oh my gosh, you're going to have a good, say, 7.5 years. It's going to be very nice. You're just going through a little bit of a tough thing here. So, um, the, and how this can play out is that there can be some stop starts in your career. Um, sometimes this is the exact transit where people massively rise in this transit. Okay, so you might have some stop start, you might have something where you skyrocket. That is possible here too. I've got the note here, uh, even in relationship with significant others. Yeah, there could be stop starts in your relationships. I have seen sometimes that people split from partners during this time as a possibility. Um, so you could leave a relationship or a job or you could even switch careers completely. This is a transit where so many times I have seen people radically change what they do. So, and this can be promotion. This can be you get a fantastic promotion into some brand new line of work. Um, for me, this was a time when I switched from having a corporate thing to doing what I do now. You know, so the big changes can happen in this transit. I've got the note here, be financially conservative during this transit. You'll want to keep some savings just in case. This is that kind of, have a little bit set aside, okay, if you can. Uh, now there's third aspect on the 10th house. So you are getting ready for the world stage. You are getting ready to shine, to do your big thing, right? Now that is gonna be Saturn in Aries, 2027 to 2028. All right, so you, Saturn's going to be in your 10th house then. But right now you're getting ready. So there, I've got the note here, there are big career changes now. Or well, this is the time to do those big career changes. Now Saturn, second, oh no, seventh aspect. Sorry, I've written the wrong thing there. Seventh aspect on the second house. Uh, this is a good time to be building savings, yeah, as I said. But know that for this Part of some like for some parts of this transit, so maybe for a few weeks, a few months, something like this. But uh, you might need to be dependent on someone else for some periods of this transit. So you might financially, for example, okay, you might be needed to depend on a family member, uh, you know, husband if you're married, or um, family support, parents, that kind of thing. I know for me, when I made the transition going from corporate to what I do now, I did have some savings, but there were some patches in there where my mum was my, you know, she helped me out and I needed that help. So um, I've got the note here. It's okay, hold faith. If you don't have family, if you don't have a mum or husband or brother or somebody or whatever, right? If you don't have anyone. I've seen this as well in people's lives that um, government support, I've heard the most extraordinary stories of organizations and institutions that just come in and they provide that regular income. So even if you're in a country where, you know, I know someone, he's, um, yeah, he's, he's got quite a severe um, disability actually, and there's a Swiss organization that pays him for his art, they, they just constantly, they're always paying him. And he runs significant energy on this line. It's so interesting, I'm just joining the dots now, yeah. And uh, it's a Swiss company that um, 
you know, pays, pays him like every two weeks or something. And that's, I don't know if it's forever, but it's amazing. Like I've seen the most amazing things happen where organizations just miraculously step in and provide what you need. Always hold the faith, all right? Uh, now Saturn, 10th aspect on the fifth house. So relationship with your children uh, could be tested at this time or relationship with your creativity, okay, um, will also be tested at this time. But remember, this is Aquarian energy, and this is about being unique. It's about being an individual and stand out. So definitely be creative and definitely be looking to, um, you know, use your creativity. The other beautiful thing here is that this is Saturn in the eighth. So an occult gift might open up. And actually, I'm just remembering that is what happened with me. I didn't know I could read charts and do all this stuff. But then I studied books solidly for a year and then I started reading charts and it just was happening. And I was like, OK, and clients would tell me you should charge more. And they were, my clients were guiding me. They were actively guiding me how to build my practice. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. So um, I got guidance from, from my clients, amazingly, who told me to to uh, one and once she said oh you should do a relationship reading I said oh I don't do those she said no well you're gonna do one for me so I was like wow I had the most amazing early clients who just had just extraordinary faith in me I was I'm so indebted to them but anyway uh, an occult gift might open up for you here that you didn't even know you had and then but it cracks open and all of a sudden oh my gosh a whole new cycle opens up here so uh, cancer I'm I'm liking the look of this transit for you. Yes, it's a challenging one, but th this is your inner riches are going to go possibly through the roof, okay? And that's, that's going to be amazing. So we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon, Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. This is, we're going to take a look at Saturn's movement through Aquarius. This is from 18 Jan 2023 to 30 March 2025. It's a long period of time. What do we have here for you? Well, we've got some Kendra energy. We've got Saturn in the seventh. We've got some initiatory energy here. So you can start something, okay? You can get something going. You can get something off the ground. It's a really good time to start a new business. Um, a really good time to start a social media platform. This could be a good time as well um, for your love life. You might be uh, you might be getting married. You know that that might be the thing that you're initiating at this time. You could be getting married at this time. Um, it, if you are in a relationship, I will say that Saturn is likely to be testing you. Okay, it'll test the weak links in the partnership. It'll test your marriage. It'll test the quality of your relationship. Saturn can be challenging here, okay? So I will say that. Um, I've got the note here, be very patient with your partner. Equally be very patient with yourself. And the idea is look at what's on your side of the tennis net because that's the only thing you can deal with. You know, you can't control anyone else or, you know, and, and, and in very subtle ways as we do life, we. You know, and I know I've done this, like where you try to manipulate someone else <laughs> into, into being nice or something. It doesn't work. So we, we can only look at our side of the tennis net and that's it. So do that. Do that. And um, yeah, Saturn in the seventh, right? If, if Rahu is in the seventh, Rahu wants to manipulate, doesn't he? But look, it's, it's all good. You just work with you. You just work with you and your energy and that's it. And that's the best you can do. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And, and go slow and be patient. Be patient with other people. That's going to be important here. Now there's a third aspect on the ninth house. This is a really good time to improve your skills or to skill up or to add new strings to your bow. This is going to be a great time for you to learn more things actually. And that is so important. I'm always wanting to learn more astrological things, but sometimes I'm just not in the mood or I'm just not inspired. And these days, after a whole day of doing astrology and readings, I don't feel like watching any astrology videos, whereas I used to love them. I used to watch all the time, but now, now this is my work. So it's kind of, I have to watch other things after work. But anyway, uh, now seventh aspect on your first house. 
So at times you might feel a little bit drained, you might feel tired, um, that's quite possible, okay? Life might feel a little bit stressful with this transit, I will say that. So rest, build rest into your life. Um, you're gonna want to have good diet, good exercise. If you can have a meditation practice, absolutely do that. I'll put a link on my screen, um, on free, type that into my uh, website and you'll get the meditation seminar that I do totally free of charge. I don't charge much for it anyway, but you can have that for free. Um, yeah, so do, do take a look at that. I've got the note here, good time to maintain structure in your diet, in your exercise. That's gonna be important. Now, 10th aspect is gonna be on your fourth house. So this could be um, relationship with mother might come into focus, it might be strained at this time or, or challenging, stuff might come up in that relationship. Um, it could be mother's health that comes into focus and is challenged at this time. Uh, the other thing is that this could be a transit where you move house uh, or you restructure or you improve your house in some significant way. So Leo, all up, it's, it's gonna be a busy transit for you. You are kind of on the playing field of life. If you feel like you haven't been, uh, I know we talk a lot about career for you, don't we? Because you had Saturn sixth before, didn't you? So that was very much about career. This is about career, but it's also about your heart. It's about love, it's about marriage. It's about all that kind of thing as well. So see how you go with this transit. Um, you are kind of, this is kind of, you know, now and even the next 2.5 years after this, after 30 March 2025, that is going to be, you know, that, that's going to contain its challenges as well. But things, you, you'll see, there, there are good, very good transits coming up for you as well. But see how you go with this one. It, it can be really good. It can be really, really good. If you make it good, Leo, it's going to be good. That's how it works. All right. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon, Virgo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We're gonna take a look at Saturn's movement through Aquarius. This is 18 Jan, 2023, through to 30 March, 2025. Now Virgo, you are one of the lucky three signs where Saturn wants to gift you, he wants to reward you, he wants to build that next platform up in your life. This is a great transit and you are so lucky. Make the most of every day of this transit, okay? It's a great time to build that next platform up in life. And I'm not just talking about social media, though that is going to go very well here if, if you do that. But this is the kind of thing where, you know, let's say all your life you've been doing a certain type of job, but then you get to director level and you can just delete all of those from your LinkedIn. You don't even have to show them because you've got to that director level or whatever it is. That's this transit, okay, where you can really go somewhere and attain that notch where it can never be taken away from you, okay? So this is an incredible time. So I've got here, Saturn will give you opportunities to expand your career. He's gonna bring you lots of clients. He's going to bring you opportunities, ability to compete easily. He's going to give you a lot of wins and a lot of green lights. He's going to make you look good as well, okay? Um, financially, your life is set to improve, right? <clears throat> so definitely watch out for how this transit operates. If it doesn't quite go like this, maybe from, you know, your ascendant or moon or something different, you know, you've got something different going on. So it can be tricky to read, but you will have some wins. You will have, definitely you'll have some good energy come from this transit, for sure. Now Saturn's third aspect will be on your eighth house. So Saturn will be working through anything that you are holding on to that might be holding you back, all right? And it will be very good for you to let go. Okay, so there might be some letting go work that you have to do at this time. Another thing is that Saturn could be highlighting an occult gift that you have or bringing something online that you didn't know you could do. Okay, so look out for that as well. 
Now Saturn is casting seventh aspect on your 12th house. This could indicate foreign travel or more foreign based clients. Uh, you might need to get away every now and then. Okay, if you're really busy and things are all go and you know things are quite stressful, you might want to escape from it all now and then. It, it would be a good thing for you to do, okay, to enjoy some travel. <clears throat> and Saturn will be casting 10th aspect on your third house. So you will have energy to put into your work. You know, you will be able to promote yourself. It's great for social media. You, you know, you will have the energy to make that video or do whatever it is that you do, right? Um, great energy if you are client facing, absolutely. And this is really beautiful energy for socializing as well. This can be a time where Saturn gifts you new friends, uh, your soul tribe people, you might even meet uh, partners, okay? So you might meet the love of your life at this time if you're single. Virgo, I'm loving this transit for you. I'm so excited. Make the most of it. All right, enjoy, enjoy. You're going to have a good time. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon, Libra Sun, as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. We're going to take a look at Aquarius, Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn's going to move through Aquarius, 18 Jan 2023 to 30th March 2025. Clearly, this is huge. This is a big transit. And for you, you're going to have Saturn in your fifth house. So superiors at work might test you at times. Uh, equally, if you are an employer and you have staff, your staff might test you as well. Things could be a little bit stressful here. So you might be receiving challenges at your workplace. This is quite possible. Expenses could go up with this transit as well. Also, if you're invested in the stock market, you're going to want to be conservative or keep an eye on that because there could be changes there as well. Now, Saturn's casting third aspect on your seventh house. So at times, your marriage could be tested, all right? Uh, your commitment to your work could also be tested at this time. But this does kind of look like, yeah, relationships with others in general could be tested at this time. And <clears throat> the way to deal with that is just to look after what's on your side of the tennis net. Because, you know, you can't, you can't really control or influence anyone else, even though we all secretly try to, <laughs> right? When people do that, uh, it doesn't work. So you just have to deal with what's on your side of the tennis net, and that's it. And if you know that you did your best, that's all you need. That's all you're going to need through this transit, just to know that you did your best. <clears throat> now, seventh aspect will be on your 11th house. So how you bring in opportunities is going to be restructured at this time. It's a really good time to create additional streams of income based on your creativity. So if you've got some kind of incredible idea that Oh, I know if I do this, this could be also the time of the side hustle as well, where you are, you know, you're doing your moonlighting business. So yes, you work nine to five, but then you work five to nine on something that really excites you. Um, this is a really great time to spend energy on that. Okay. And, that, and get that kind of thing going. <clears throat> Apologies about my voice. It's just starting to falter at this time. Uh, there's a 10th aspect on your second house. So long-term wealth, your long-term wealth is being restructured at this time. Hopefully you're going to be able to save quite a bit of money at this time during this transit. This is, so this is a good time to be really conservative with the stock market and perhaps not expect too much from that, but to be really building up your long-term savings and your wealth, that would be ideal, Libra. But all up, Libra, it is looking like a good transit for you. I am liking the look of definitely the fact that your 511 line is lit is really good for creative people out there. You should be on fire when it comes to your creativity, quite literally, okay, because Saturn is moving into this fiery house. So I am liking the look of this for you, Libra. It's really great for creatives, artists of any kind. So we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Scorpio Ascendant, Moon or Sun, as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. We are going to take a look at 
Saturn's movement through Aquarius. <clears throat> this is from 18 Jan 2023 to 30th March 2025. So Saturn is going to be in your fourth house. All right, Scorpio, you are saying goodbye to the beautiful third from transit. I know it's yeah, it's it's sad, but <laughs> this period is not so bad. I've been through it. I know what this period is and it's a little bit up and down, but I will tell you some of the best things happened for me during my Saturn in the fourth. Uh, I think Saturn was fourth from my moon and some incredible things happened for me really wonderful so and that was very much in relation to to where I live and I love where I moved to and I'm, I'm very happy I'm still that's still my place there in England so um, that's Saturn fourth from so this is your Saturn dire period all right so this is a time of ups and downs uh, many of you will be able to take your gains from Saturn's previous transit and you'll be able to solidify them into a property that you buy okay that's a very real possibility in this transit if you're not buying property you might be moving okay so look out for that across this period but basically across this next uh, almost 2.5 years home and where you live is going to be in focus this could also be the kind of thing where you are working from home or you know maybe you have been working from home and you'll be back in the office or managing your time between both places also your mother's health might be in focus at this time if it's not your mother's health it could be your relationship with your mother uh, if mother is not on the earth plane anymore this could be how you nurture yourself how you make yourself feel comfortable when do you feel comfortable when do you relax when do you truly unwind when do you feel truly nurtured and do you nurture yourself now i always think that even if you know mother's with us and let's say you're a very young person we do have some some very young people who watch this channel as well uh, you know you're a teenager or something like that maybe mother is still very much part of your life always good to get good at nurturing yourself anyway I always encourage my clients whenever I'm dealing with one of the water houses that you know it's good for you to nurture yourself or be really good at cooking for yourself and doing your own thing it's so important you want to give your mum a break now and then right now we've got Saturn's third aspect on your sixth house uh, this is this is yes this is interesting energy it's important for you to be competitive in your workplace all right so you might be tested by your peers at work and it is going to be important for you to stay abreast with new things and yeah, keep a bit of an eye on the competition make sure that you are you know competing well um, that kind of thing that's that's going to be important you want to remain competitive at this time <clears throat> now the seventh aspect on your 10th house so work is in focus uh, you your character your values who you are all these things might be in focus across this time period you know and if not for the whole period in bits of this period right but these are the, going to be the areas in focus I've got the note here be humble and work hard okay that's just going to get you through you want to be focused you want to be uh, you're still kind of doing the grind working hard here okay this isn't quite shine time just yet right now as a 10th aspect on your first house so definitely take good care of your health across this transit your physical body may take the brunt of stress at times you might feel stressed out that that can happen because you've got a lot of uh, Kendra energy you've got four yeah well you've got three Kendra houses are lit and one career house there the sixth is lit you've got a lot of career energy you're going to be busy uh, I've got the note here you are needed on the playing field of life so if you have felt like you know and I know some of you have had your third from transit you haven't been working and things like that well you're going to get busy this is a transit of being busy this is a transit of you being on the playing field and being active in life so Scorpio get ready you're going to be busy I hope you're going to enjoy it and we are now going to welcome and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining now this is Sagittarius ascendant Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology 
and we are going to take a look at Saturn's movement through Aquarius. This is across 18 Jan 2023 to 30th March 2025. You're one of the lucky signs, Sagittarius. I'm so happy to tell you that you are one of the lucky three signs that's getting a good transit. So Saturn's third from, okay, this is great. This is especially good for any Sagittarius moons out there. If you are a Sagittarius moon, well done. You have finished your Sadisati period. That is over, it's done. You're not gonna have to encounter that for, well, gosh, how many years? Let me calculate here. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25 years thereabouts. You're not gonna have a, another Sadisati for a while. So good on you, okay? You have, you're done. And I'm really happy about that. So, well, 25, maybe 20, I'll, I'll work it out, I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, you won't have to deal with that for a while. You've been through a tough time over the last seven and a half years. And now you're coming into a good time where Saturn wants to reward you for all the hardships that you've gone through. Now, if you have worked hard and worked consistently over this last 7.5 years, Saturn kind of records all of that. He remembers all of that. He adds it all up and he gives you a lot. He gives you a huge amount. He kind of catches you up as well, okay? So if you feel like, what's the point of life? What am I doing here? And then we all go through that. But this is the transit where he wants to show you a good time. So I've got the note here. Now is the time to be social. Now is the time to earn money. Now is the time to build the next platform up in your life. You might be promoted in your job. You might meet the love of your life. All kinds of things are now going to be open to you. So I'm really excited, Sagittarius. Now there's going to be a third aspect on your fifth house. Uh, so definitely romance is here. You might meet someone new and exciting if you are single. Um, your creativity will be ignited again. Now your expenses could go up. Okay, so that's something to watch out for. Um, if you have children, definitely you're going to have a great bond with your children, a great time with your kids. So that's great. Saturn's seventh aspect will be on your ninth house. So travel might open up for you. You might travel, you might be given the gift of a guru. Okay, you might have a guru in your life. You might become a guru to others as well. Now Saturn's 10th aspect will be on the 12th house. So again, we've got invitations from foreign places. This could be retreats. You might decide I, you know, that you've been working so hard and you've been cooped up and you might decide, I wanna go on a spiritual retreat and I want to, you know, I know um, I always look at those Eckhart Tolle in Europe or something like that. I would love to go on something like that. So yeah, you know, there's all kinds of things though. It's not just that, there's so many things. Got the note here, there could be an increase in the spiritual dimension of your life. Um, you might be able to ascend with little effort at this time. So those of you who are very much on your spiritual path, this is a good time for meditation, a good time to, you know, in, in, you might discover some kind of, um, something massively improving within, you know, or even some spiritual gifts could come online, things like that, heightened intuition, all of that. So Sagittarius, I'm so happy for you. Take care, enjoy this transit, enjoy every day of this transit. And we are now gonna welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Capricorn, Ascendant Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, Capricorn Moons, you are in your last phase of Sadisati. Well done, okay? You are doing amazing. You are the champions of the zodiac. I think I've said this to you many times <clears throat> over the years, actually. Anyone who's been with me for that long, you know I'm your biggest cheerleader and you are doing amazing, okay? Capricorn Moon, you just got a little bit left. It's not long. You do this little portion and then Saturn's gonna reward you. You're gonna have a good, good time. So just a little bit of time left. Uh, but that's all right. So this is, did I mention this? That this is Saturn moving through Aquarius. This is 18 Jan 2023 to 30th March 2025. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that's what we got going on here. Now Saturn is in your second house, okay? This is a great time to be building long-term wealth slowly. 
All right. Uh, Saturn will help you structure your wealth or your assets at this time. Your family of origin might also be in focus. Your relationships there might be tested. Okay, so if things are difficult with siblings, parents, you know, these are your people, your family of origin. Things could be challenging in those relationships and just, you know, be with it. It's, it happens to everyone and just work on your side of the tennis net. Just, just do what you can control and leave them to be free, to have their opinions, to do what it is they want. It's their karma. If they want to do the wrong thing, you let them, you know. And I, I always try, I think I said this a couple of signs ago that I, try, I, I sort of influence people or, you know, but I, I only ever manipulate for good, honestly. I don't, I don't want to, but I don't, I don't even do that now because it doesn't work, right? So, you know, you just have to let people be. They'll figure it out in their own time. You don't worry about that. So, yeah, but just be, be, bear this in mind that there could be some tests in your relationships with your family members. There's a third aspect on the fourth house of home. So where you live could be up for debate. You might move. Uh, you might also restructure your home or if there's some big renovation or something you want to do, maybe this is the time where you do that. Uh, you might update something about where you live. Relationship with mother or her health might come into focus. And if it's not relationship with mother, you could be looking at how you nurture yourself. You could be looking at how you make yourself comfortable. Are you looking after yourself? All that kind of thing. Now Saturn's seventh aspect will be on the eighth house. So any shared assets might come into focus at this time and there could be a restructuring in that area as well. Saturn's tenth aspect will be on your eleventh house. So how you bring wealth into your life could come into focus at this time. You might have ideas to create new streams of income, okay? And you might even start a social media platform or all that kind of thing. Uh, and you might do that to bring more opportunities your way. So Capricorn Moon, you know, even though I know if you're Capricorn Moon, you're inside of South, yes, it's a bit challenging, but there's some good opportunities here. And I think this is a real financial time for you. This is just a time to really get on top of the finances, really feel like you're, you know, and that's doing all the good stuff, like making sure you're paying off your debts. And you, this, is, this is a 2.5 year period where you are getting in control of the finances. So you're paying off any debts uh, as well, maybe. And you're working out how to bring more money in. I think that is really the focus for you at this time. Capricorn Moon, I'm liking, or, or Ascendant or Sun, I'm liking the look of this transit. There's some good stuff in here. So enjoy this transit and we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius welcome. So this is Aquarius ascendant, Aquarius moon or Aquarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We are looking at Saturn's movement through Aquarius. This is from 18 January 2023 to the 30th of March 2025. Now Aquarius moon, if you are Aquarius moon, you're at the height of Satisati period. This is, there, there are going to be some moments across the next couple of years that will be challenging. That does happen. And just know that you are, if you're on the spiritual path, Saturn is massively looking out for you. Okay. And keep working hard. Keep being good and working hard. Saturn is noting it all down, especially for Aquarius moons. Okay. Because he's right on your moon. So he really knows. So be good, work hard, and don't worry if you're not seeing any results because Saturn's noting it all down and he's going to catch you up. When he moves third from, and you're going to get there, you're going to get there in some time, he's going to reward you. He's going to give you all that you're due. So don't worry if you're working hard right now and it feels like Groundhog Day and like you're working so hard and I'm not getting anywhere. I know, I know how that feels. I have that myself <laughs> and like it's a, and you work really hard and there's nothing going on. I know. But I have full faith in Saturn that he clocks it all up and he, because he's the karmic accountant, he has to give you. So be good and it will come. It'll, it'll all come to you. So I've got the note here, Saturn is in your first house. Okay, so this is your time. 
Saturn could be on your moon if, he's, if, you're, if you're Aquarius moon here. So it could be challenging, but don't worry. It's not for the whole 2.5 year period. It'll be like a few weeks here and there. It's never the whole period. So that's, you don't have to worry. It's just a few weeks, could be just a bit, you know, difficult. It's sort of here and there, it just depends, but you'll, you'll make it. You'll be so strong as well. I've got the note here, who you are as a self, as a being is being tested. Your values, your character, what you stand for, who you are, what you're all about. There's a lot of kinder energy lit. So you're gonna be on the playing field, you're gonna be busy. And I often see people when their Saturn is on the moon, they're busy in life. We've got three Kendra houses are lit here. So you, you kind of have to be on the playing field of life. You're going to be busy. You're going to be working, right? Saturn's third aspect will be on your third house. So this is what makes this period hard because Saturn is casting his slightly cold, difficult energy on your third house, which contains courage. So your courage might be diminished at this time. That's what makes it difficult. You might doubt yourself. You might be like, oh, am I doing the right thing? What am I doing? Like, you know, I've got the note here. At times you might feel like you don't have courage. As Saturn is testing that area. He's, and he's really testing your mind. Third house, there's mind here as well. Okay, so it's tough. I've got the note here, go slow if you're in doubt. Okay, and know that doubt is an illusion. And I've got the note here, just be low key if you can. Just be low key, be humble, work hard, put your head down, work hard, and know that everything you do, all the good that you put out, you may not be seeing instant results. It's going to come back. It comes back in. I can promise you that. I know that, okay? Now Saturn's seventh aspect is gonna be on your seventh house. Your marriage and relationships will all be tested at this time. I've got the note here, mother can be a refuge for you. And it's interesting, I was looking at this because Saturn's not casting any aspect on the fourth house, but he's going over your moon and moon is mother. So, and I know for me, when I had my Sarasati period, yeah, I had a tough time with my mother, that is for sure. But that's also because there are other reasons. Yeah, and I can see that astrologically as well. Because um, sometimes the sign makes a difference, all, all of that. But let's see, I've got the note here. Mother, yeah, mother can be a refuge for you. But moon is mother and that relationship might be being tested at this time. It also depends on other things. I've got the note here though, you will learn to nourish and nurture yourself emotionally through this time, okay? That is gonna be your remedy. If you can learn how to kind of mother yourself at this time and nurture yourself emotionally, you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Now Saturn's 10th aspect will be on your 10th house. You're gonna be working, you're gonna be busy, your performance will be scrutinized at this time. So just work in the Saturnian way. Work with excellence in service. Do a bit extra. Work hard, don't expect any reward. And you're gonna be fine. You're gonna cruise through it. All right, Aquarius, so I'm wishing you a good transit. You take care out there. And we are now gonna welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time, we're all good. Pisces, this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We are taking a look at Saturn's movement through Aquarius. This is from 18 Jan 2023 to 30th March 2025. And Pisces Moon, you are going to start side to side the period. I know it's not easy, and but <clears throat> you're going to be fine because you're Pisces, right? You're very spiritual, and you probably know all about side to side the period. And if you don't, don't worry. I'll tell you a little bit now. But you're so spiritual, and that's why I think Pisces, you're gonna, you're going to kind of your inner riches are going to go up. And this is what I've discovered. I'm just about to finish my 12th from transit. Okay, I've been running a big, I've started been going, powering through a watery place and it's 12th from. I know this transit all too well. And at the start of it, start of Jan, Feb 2020, I became very sick and I've been working on my health and I've been working on my spiritual side and I've been procrastinating a lot, right? 12th from, I've been procrastinating, working on my health. And, um, what I can tell you is that your inner riches 
will go through the roof during this time. To the outside world, they might look at you in this transit and think, oh, your life isn't going too well, right? The, the, the outside world has done that for me, you know, well, many times, but they've definitely done it over these last two, three years. But me living this experience of the 12th from transit, my inner riches have gone so high and I've learned so much about my health and how to look after myself and how to heal. How to heal surgery free, drug free, everything free. Honestly, at the start of this transit, I could have been under a surgeon's knife. That's how serious my health it was bad. Like it, it's, and um, through a lot of modalities and through a lot of uh, diet, exercise, homeopathy, this, that, everything, supplements, you name it, I did it. And I've healed, I've healed what I had. And not only that, but now I've just about conquered headaches. I don't really get headaches anymore. So, you know, and if I do, I just, I can go through them without taking any drugs. It's amazing. So what I want to say to you here is that you're, yes, you're going through Sadi Sati and yes, it's 7.5 years long and, you know, there'll be some challenges, but if you work with this time, your inner riches will go through the roof. Your health will improve massively. Your spirituality, your intuition will go up leaps and bounds. You can do so well in this time. So this is your 12th from transit. And this is going to be, this is the one I think with a 12th from transit, you're kind of not needed on the playing field of life. I've seen people when they're in this Sadi Sate and Saturn is on the moon, they're doing big stuff in the world because that's Kendra energy and you're on the playing field and you're busy and you're needed and you're working and there's a lot going on. So this is actually a period where you can afford to relax a bit. You can afford to procrastinate a bit. You can afford to go slow. You can afford to take time out, work on your health. <clears throat> it's actually quite a lovely transit, <laughs> but it, it, at times it might feel, you might feel a bit down as well. I, I felt down, you know, these last, what is it, two, three years? Yeah, I felt down. Um, it, it was hard, but I recognized that it's, there's a limit. And when you recognize that there's a limit and that it's gonna change, and that one day I am gonna be very busy, and I'm gonna be earning properly, and not just breaking even. Okay, that's what my 12 from transit, I have just been breaking even. It has been hard. It has been hard to save any money. So it could be a little bit like that for you over this, over this period. But these times have a limit. They come to an end. And when I look back, I wouldn't change this transit for anything. It's been perfect. I see it now. I see the perfection now. And through this transit, you will come to a place and you, you might start at this place and keep it going where you see the perfection of it. You're Pisces, you're probably seeing the perfection now and you're just going to be fine. So, you know, you're very spiritual. You guys have, um, you know, in order to attain a Pisces anything, you've done a lot of times with the Zodiac to, to acquire that. So I'm excited for you, Pisces. This is going to be fine. You're going to deal with it just fine. Got the note here, great time for your inner riches to increase enormously. If your health is challenged, rest, go with it, relax. The next transit will definitely be better. Also, it's fire. Yeah, your next transit will be fire as well. So you're going to have fiery energy there. Now, there's a third aspect on your second house. So Saturn might not let you grow your savings at this time. Uh, across this transit. Expenses might be high. Your inner riches are growing though. I will tell you, now that this transit is coming to an end, over the last few months I've been able to accumulate some savings. So it's been okay. But I noticed for the majority of this transit, whatever I earn goes straight out. Like it's just been like this and uh, it has been a little bit challenging. But it's just a transit. And then it switches and because I got a lot of Saturn in my chart, <clears throat> Saturn's movement influences me enormously. So that's the other thing. You might have other planets that are more dominant and you've got things set up slightly differently. So it depends for everybody. It's different for everyone. Um, but I will say just be conservative financially a little bit at this time. Now seventh aspect on your sixth house, um, it could be competition challenging you out of nowhere. 
you know, and it can be the kind of thing you're running your YouTube channel and then somebody copies your video or something and yeah, there's all that kind of thing as well. <clears throat> Watch out for that. That can happen at this time. Uh, tenth aspect on your ninth house. So Saturn will be testing your authority. Okay, um, could be testing your relationship with your father. It's really interesting. When I was there with Aquarius, I was looking at relationship with mother. And I do think that across Sardis Sati period, one of the things that we do is we, part of Saturn is going over your moon, your mind, your emotions, and who's built a, a lot of your mind and your emotions. It's your parents and the values that they gave you. So this is actually a time where over the next 2.5 years, you are looking at relationship with father or how, and maybe it might be lack of father, okay? Maybe it might be lack of father figure. And this is where you can, you can give that to yourself. Okay, anything you feel that you've lacked or that you didn't have, give it to yourself. So across this time, and you're in a spiritual time here. So, and me, I actually love any time that is spiritual. Like, so this is a time, 12th from transit, where it's going to be great if you're an introvert, if you like being a hermit, if you love indulging in spirituality, if you, you know, like to work on your health and those kind of, I love all of that. So for me, I actually enjoyed my 12th from transit. So, you know, this, this could be a great time. Um, I've got the note here, great time to learn from gurus and those above you as well, or those people in authority or people who we perceive as you know, they know, they've been there, they've done that. You know, you can choose, oh, from all kinds of spiritual teachers who you want to learn from. Um, that is actually a video I want to create. I want to do a video. I must write this down. I'm writing down my to-do list in this video. Um, spiritual teachers, yeah, which spiritual teachers are good for you? I want to create that video. Hopefully I get some time because it's the end of the year and uh, yeah, I haven't had as many bookings lately, so that's good in a way because it, gets, it means I can create more videos. But um, definitely, you know, you can check out the website if you, if you do want to book. But guys, I'm gonna leave it here. I've been, I've been blabbering on Pisces. It's just because I know Pisces moon is going through this side of period. I just wanna reassure you, it's gonna be fine. You're on the spiritual path. You're here watching a video like this, it means Sadi Sati isn't going to touch you too much, right? Sadi Sati will rip through people like Fred Goodwin, the city banker who cheated and conned and did all of that. Oh, Saturn has to strip things from that guy and take him to task, right? So those people have to be worried. But anybody coming and watching this channel, you're going to be fine. So yeah, you know, every, everyone who comes here or some form of, uh, you know, advanced spiritual being up but I'm always amazed and learning things from you guys well I want to thank you so much to anyone who's watched this whole video thank you so much for being here and stay tuned on the channel hopefully I'll be able to make some more content coming up in the coming weeks thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time